Hello, today I'm going to be talking about Notes from Underground or Notes from the Underground by Fyodor Dostoevsky. This was first published in 1984. Um, I have it bound up here with the double, but I'm just going to talk about Notes from Underground. This was a really strange little book. Um, I read it for, for book club, actually, um, and it's uh, like 120 pages long, but the first 40 pages, so the full first third, is just philosophy. Um, there's, there's no plot. It is about this man um, called the Underground Man. Is like it's he's never addresses himself um, by name, uh, so we just call him the Underground Man. The book starts with him um, Dostoevsky and Lee erratic, um, just uh, saying that he's he's forty and he's been underground for ages and he's basically stuck in his consciousness and doesn't participate in society um and it's the kind of philosophizing that is really hard to read like you you read the paragraphs and you understand it and it makes sense but like two pages later you, you can't remember what mental connection brought you to where you were um i found it really hard to read and to be honest didn't want to take it in i didn't really care to um like really get in on what he was saying. I was glad when that bit ended, but it felt like it was more about why he was saying those things than the actual content of what he was saying. There were some interesting passages in that bit about um, determinism and like how people relate to each other. But overwhelmingly, you just got the sense of this absolutely wretched character. <laughs> and the following two thirds of the book, um, it flashes back to when he is 25. These are kind of the events that led him to go underground. Um, and he is just a really like annoying, horrid man. <laughs> he is very socially isolated and overthinks everything and sort of forces himself upon um, some old school fellows of his and uh, basically forces the company on them and then they're quite rude to him and he just is so erratic and crazy. He then follows these like school friends of his to a brothel um, where he picks up a, a woman, Liza, and um, kind of actually really torments her by saying like, what are you doing here? You're so much better than this. Like, this is where your life is going to lead. Come with me and I'll save you. And then when she does like reappear to him, he completely dismisses her. So he's just like pulling all of this like negativity <laughs> into the world and um, anyone that gets swept up in it, I mean, no one comes out happy. He's a very contradictory character. At once he loathes everybody that he's around and calls them idiots and fools. And he's super intelligent, is like way superior. Um, but then equally he, he like needs to have this social contact. Um, like he doesn't, he thinks that he's like better off on his own mentally like he, he he doesn't think that anyone has any real value and yet he can't help but want but be drawn to being around people and being accepted in society that he doesn't want to be accepted into i can't say i really enjoyed reading this um but it actually prompted a very interesting discussion in book club and i think that was mostly around whether you feel compassion for this man or whether you find him really wretched. Um, and um, my two book club companions, um, they are both like good Christian women and they really fell for him and pitied him. And I just didn't, I just couldn't find anything redeeming about this man that imposed himself on people um, whilst just like, like is is really horrid and and vicious to everybody he comes into contact with um and obviously it comes from this like super consciousness this this overthinking this like um like intellectual isolation he's sort of put himself into by completely disregarding everybody else around him but i struggled to actually feel compassion for him uh, when he just appeared as such a misanthrope to me it's funny in book club i kind of compared it to like delusional ravings of like a school shooter, for example, where it's like you can you can pity that they had these thoughts and that they got into this mental situation, but that doesn't excuse the fact that they're an arsehole. That's just a difficult thing to balance up, and I tend to because I'm a horrible person. I'm not horrible. He keeps describing himself as horrible. I'm not horrible because I'm a, a critical and um, quite mean person, uh, I come down on just him, him not being redeemed by his own demons. Which is funny, because when you think about the like, 
determinism aspects of the philosophy in, in the start. It's like he actually had no choice. None of us have any choice because we're all just atoms in a sequence of events in this good old world we live in. Definitely a lot of food for thought in this book. Uh, I found it really valuable to talk with other people about it and kind of get their perspective on it. Um, I didn't find it particularly enjoyable to read um, because I think a lot of, this is like my third Dostoevsky, um, a lot of his characters are pretty repugnant but they have like I can see myself in them in, in certain aspects and this this guy was just like so wretched I didn't want to sympathize with him. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of it or whether you want to read it or not based on this video um, and I will see you in the next one.